The beans are interchangeable. The beans are not the story here. The shrimp is the story. The shrimp with the harissa and the lemon, that's the story. Um, fuck. You guys are gonna kill me. Just the part with the shrimp. Okay. Sorry, everybody. It just, I hate the way it looks. It's stressing me out. Okay, thank you. Spicy shrimp, take four. Spicy shrimp take four, but it's really spicy shrimp tank two, spiritually. Hi everybody, I'm Allison Roman, and welcome to Home Movies. Uh, moments ago, we started this episode, there was a fennel bulb, there was an onion, we had some other ingredients out, there was white beans involved, and about halfway through the cooking process, I said, this is too much. It's not working. Stop the dish, stop the filming. We gotta start over. I'm taking the L. And so, uh, it's shrimp take two. I like cooking the shrimp with the shells. I like the fact that you can peel the shell and like suck the juices out of like the little legs that get kind of crispy. I like that. And I want you to like that too. So we're gonna cook shrimp in a spicy harissa butter. There's gonna be caramelized lemon. It's gonna be saucy and spicy and really delicious. And we're gonna serve that with a baguette. We're gonna eat it with some arugula and lemon. It's gonna feel like we're at a beautiful restaurant. What are we at, Servos? I love it. I love it here. And that's that. And pretty soon everyone's gonna be cooking shrimp with the shells on. Um, I do often find that shrimp sold with the shell on is a higher quality than the shrimp sold without the shell. The shell also protects the shrimp in the event that it has been frozen. And the fact that you can buy it fresh and then freeze it or buy it frozen and keep it frozen means that you can kind of always have it on hand. I have a real bee in my bonnet about like the perception that frozen seafood or frozen anything is of lesser quality than something fresh. I got news for you. Most of the seafood you're buying, whether it's a shrimp or a scallop or a fish filet, it's frozen. It's been frozen before. Even if it's not being sold to you frozen when you buy it, it's been frozen at some point in its time here on this planet, dead or alive. Probably dead, because it, if it was frozen, it's dead. Um, so frozen seafood is not bad. In fact, I think frozen seafood is good. Free our minds from the construct that it all needs to be like fresh for it to be fresh. You know what I mean? Um, all right, these are oddly shaped in many styles of garlic cloves. Let's call it four large cloves. You could use a shallot. You could use half a red onion. God, I feel so much better about this direction. I was really having a lot of anxiety about the shrimp before. It's not all seamless all the time, you know? Not everything clicks immediately. Sometimes you gotta take a step back. Um, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of olive oil and then later add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. I might finish it with olive oil too. It should be like a richish, unctuous, delicious style. I'm gonna thinly slice half of this lemon. I love cooking with whole lemon. Oftentimes people will say things taste bitter when they cook with whole lemon, and that's because of the seeds. The seeds contain most of the bitterness in the lemon. It's not the pith that's bitter in a good way. The seeds are bitter in a bad way. So I sort of will like fish them out before I start slicing. Because as soon as you open up that seed, you're exposing that bitterness to the rest of the lemon. But caramelized lemon in a skillet will give you so, so much flavor that you just can't get from like juicing squeeze lemon over something. It's fussy, but worth it. Same. Save the other half of lemon for juicing over at the end because it will need it. So as that fries in there, I'm gonna add the lemon slices. And we're gonna let them caramelize. The shrimp are gonna take about two minutes, three minutes to cook. So you kinda wanna make sure that anytime you're cooking with shrimp, everything that you're cooking it in, the sauce, whatever, is kind of already formed. Like you're good to go. It's already happened. And then I'm gonna eat everything with a delicious crusty baguette. We interrupt this episode of Home Movies to bring you a message from our sponsor, Skims. I am a loyal Skims customer. I have been for years. I find their underwear to be unparalleled in comfort. And I thought that I had found the most comfortable version until I tried the Fits Everybody collection, which is by far the most stretchy, delicious, soft, supple, breathable fabric that I have ever worn on my body. So head to the link in the description to check out the Fits Everybody collection. They're available in size XXS to 4X. And after you place your order, be sure to let them know that I sent you. So when you go to check out, there'll be like a, how did you hear from us? And you can click YouTube. And then from there, there will be the option to click this show, the show you're watching, 
and that's how they know that I sent you. I'm currently wearing the triangle bralette in onyx and also the cheeky brief in onyx, which those you won't see because I'm not taking my pants off. Not today, anyway, not for you. I don't really like sparkling water, but I can crush a spindrift. Like it's mana from heaven. And we're back. Um, I'm breaking up the good butter for this because I'm gonna eat it with the baguette and I want to. We've done the AB before, but good butter, regular butter. All right, as those get toasted, I'm gonna add the harissa paste. I have two types of harissa paste here. I like them both, but um, all harissa is different depending on what brand you're using and where it's coming from and how it's made. So I think it's important that if you're using a condiment like harissa, you taste it before you cook with it because they're not all the same. And one tablespoon of this is gonna light your mouth on fire. One tablespoon of this is fine. So you really have to adjust and like make sure that the thing that you're cooking with, you're adjusting to that. Like tomato paste, harissa paste likes to be cooked or fried in oil, although it doesn't look like I like it because it's spitting at me, just to kind of take the edge off. It toasts the spices, it toasts the chili. Uh, and now I'm gonna add my shrimp. I'm using one and a half pounds of shrimp and that's gonna feed about four people. It could feed more than that if this was something more like an appetizer, which just feels like a weird outdated word. I don't know why I used it. You do want to salt these well. Shrimp can be a little bland. And I know that they still have the shell on, but when we take them out of the shell, we're gonna dunk the shrimp in the sauce and eat them that way, so. I'm gonna add this knob of butter as well. Okay, I'm going with a full tablespoon of harissa. I can already tell. People will ask, how do you know when your shrimp is done? Well, it turns bright pink. And the texture goes from squishy to firm. It goes from translucent to opaque. At Keen's, which is my favorite steakhouse in New York, I got married there, everybody knows it. I love their shrimp cocktail because it comes with really thinly sliced lemon. And I always eat the lemon, although I'm sure it's just a garnish. Some people see garnish, I see a snack. And if you want to do this with peeled and deveined shrimp, you can cut your cooking time down by at least a minute. They'll cook a little bit faster, but this cooks so quickly that I don't see the need. The only reason you wouldn't use the shells is again, if you are just not a person who wants to touch their food and take the shell off a shrimp. But part of this video is me normalizing it and me being like, no, you can and you should. Um, if you didn't have harissa paste, but you still wanted it spicy, you could use tomato paste and then add like a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes or whatever. All right, they're all pink. They all feel firm to me. I'm gonna kill the heat and just like continue to toss occasionally. But as soon as they all turn that bright pink, you're gonna kind of be in business. They look lovely. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna cut some baguette for eating pleasure. You wanna give it like a quick toast? That could be nice. Yeah, give it a quick toast. While that heats, I'm gonna take some arugula. This is just like good wild arugula. It's very spicy on its own. So I guess you could say this whole meal is a little spicy. But that's nice. Is anyone in this room off put by peeling a shrimp with their hands if they have to eat it? Yeah, nobody. The rube over there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do this one because we got boys to feed. <laughs> Allison Roman's camp for boys. Salad, just lemon. This is a Meyer lemon. Who cares? I care. A little flaky salt. If you had some radish or thinly sliced fennel, maybe leftover half an onion, shallot, you could gussy this up however you wanted, but very spicy, good arugula needs just lemon, salt, and pepper. When I was 18, I worked at the Santa Monica Farmer's Market and I sold lettuce at, for a farm called Maggie's Farm. They paid me real money, but not very much. But I could take as much lettuce and arugula as I wanted at home. And so I would, they would like send me home with bags of arugula. Um, I would just eat it like that in the car. It's so good. I don't know if I have a more favorite leaf. Like good arugula is so good. Mm, so spicy. It feels like it's like making me strong from the inside. 
Mm. A little baguette on the side. Yum, delish. A little lemon. Mm. Another reason I like shrimp with the shell is because it just looks nicer. I think the tiny, curly, little, pale, naked bodies of the shrimp should not be exposed, and they look kind of gross to me. So, this is my preference. Have I ever poured wine in a glass without spilling it at the end? I'm adding ice to the wine. Sue me. It wasn't cold, and it should be. If I forgot to chill a bottle of wine, I'm gonna put ice cubes in it. And if anyone thinks that's stupid or bad, I think you're stupid or bad. This wine is good. So good. I always hold the tail to keep it on, and then I take the legs and I kind of peel them away, split it down the middle that side. What were those videos that were really popular? Mukbang? Mm. It's giving mukbang. Mm. And then for baguette, you get to drag it through that. Mm -mm -mm. That was a genuine mm mm mm. Just one final thought here, <clears throat> peek behind the curtain. I just made a very similar thing, but it had like fennel in it and onion, and it was like the water and the thing and the sauce. And I'm gonna say that this has half the ingredients and tastes twice as good and looks five times better. The shell is soft enough to eat and to me is like extremely texturally pleasing. I also like to occasionally eat the shell of a peanut. So, but I'm not alone in this. Many people eat the shell on a shrimp. It's just not as common in the United States. I'm guessing, but maybe in the South? Definitely in the South. Really? You eat the shrimp yeah. shell? Yeah, a lot of people do eat the shells whenever they're cooked like that. So that's the other option, and it tastes really good. Nobody can leave this house until they eat the shrimp in the shell. Anyone else like uh, shrimp? Would I be served you? Sure. Can you try it? It's try it for me. Really, mm -hmm. Very nice, actually. It's very nice, actually, he says. It's really tough. It feels like you're supposed to eat it. I yeah. Know you can, but it feels like Yeah. So good. Great job, everybody. Great job. Thank you.